Good afternoon. I'm Steve Roberts and I'd like to teach you a bit about how a video camera works. Just the basics, but it's something important that you'll want to know because later on when you learn procedures and techniques of video cameras, unless you want to memorize everything, it's good to actually be able to logically think your way through based on how the video camera works. So we're just going to cover the basics today. You'll see I've got some broadcast video cameras on the screen. They may or may not look close to what you have at home. And there are subtle differences, but if you've got a video camera at home, you're already ahead of the game. They basically work the same way. Sometimes the parts are a little bit different, the number of them, or the quality. So let's begin. First of all, it all starts with light. We need light to see, and so does the camera. Light also provides shadows, which give us depth. And there are several properties of light that are going to help us in capturing light, storing it, playing it back, or playing it live. Let's take a look at some of those properties now. First of all, light can be focused. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I took out the old magnifying glass. How many people here have had a magnifying glass and actually used it to maybe focus some light and burn some paper, possibly a leaf like here, or maybe if you're a bit naughty, I know I've done it a few times, uh, burnt an insect when you were younger. Light can be focused. This is going to be very important for us in learning how a video camera works. Another property of light is that it can be split into its component colors. Now, normally when we look at light, our eyes adjust pretty readily. But certainly, we've all seen a rainbow. And what's happening there is that the sunlight is being refracted by condensation in the atmosphere, and it's actually bending the light. And each different wavelength of light gets bent a little bit differently, which spreads it out into a rainbow. Now, you're going to see this come up again, this idea of refracting light. If you haven't seen a rainbow, or you're not likely to see one shortly, maybe have a look tonight when you, when you get back home and, and see uh, if the, the angle of light hits a glass properly. You might find a little uh, rainbow being cast on a table. Uh, you might have a nice glass ornament hanging in the window, which gives a sort of prismatic effect and, and causes some light to shine. So you can see examples all around you, and uh, probably the rainbow is, is the most beautiful, though. Now, another property of light is that it can be converted to electricity. And good thing for us with global warming going on because solar power could be one of the waves of the future if they get it to become efficient. This is a solar field at a military base in the U.S. and all those solar panels are producing electricity to help run that base. Now, finally, electrical signals so electricity uh, can be a signal. Um, and they come from various places, but they can actually be measured, manipulated, uh, processed, stored. And in this picture, you see a kid with an electroencephalogram, uh, probably at some sort of science thing, because it looks a lot more fun than what they do to you in the hospital. But electrocardiograms, all those things are actually taking measurements and they're, they're printing them out onto paper or displaying them on a screen and that data can be stored. And we can do the same thing with our light after we convert it to electricity. Now, all around us the world is full of sights and sounds. Sights and sounds that we want to capture. And we used to capture them with still photography. Sorry about that. My computer wanted to cancel on me, but I'm not going to let it. So, um, but now we can capture them in video. Okay, important sporting events. We sometimes don't want to capture them. We want to share them live right away. So how do we capture this light and the sound and get it here to our television screen? Well, we use the video camera. You might have guessed that one. It wasn't too hard. Uh, now this video camera is definitely not the only video camera. 
Truth be told, I chose it because it actually fit on the slide. So cameras can come in various uh, shapes and sizes, but they all have the basic same parts, and that's what we're going to go through now. First of all, all cameras have some sort of lens, okay? And that lens is to gather the light, and we'll talk about a few other unique things that it does. The next segment of the camera actually holds a prism block and some sensors. That's where our light is going to get converted to electricity. There's a bit of processing going on there to, to change it. Um, and you apply some mathematical algorithms to it. And finally, somewhere in the back of the camera usually, sometimes outboard, we have some sort of storage media. So, let's start again with this light from the scene and how we're going to capture it. First of all, I want to tell you a little bit about subtractive color mixing. Okay? Now, this is what you might have been used to in grade school when you actually mixed paints and pigments to actually form different colors. This is actually um, how we see a lot of the colors that we do because our clothes are dyed, they have pigments in them, uh, our skin has pigment in it, uh, so do plants. And basically what's happening is that light that is white for all intents and purposes to our eyes, when it falls on those objects that are of a certain color, all of the light gets absorbed except that color which gets reflected. Now this is why a dark black shirt will be much hotter in the summer than a white t-shirt because the white t-shirt actually reflects almost all of the light and it doesn't get absorbed where a black shirt is going to absorb all the different colors of light and not reflect any. Uh, in the case of our, our uh, euphonium player there, he's got a blue hat on so as our white light strikes the hat and remember it is made up of all sorts of different colors of light, all those different colors get absorbed except for that particular blue which actually gets reflected back to our eyes. So um, obviously blue isn't the only color in this scene. There was a red Hungry Jack sign. So you've got to imagine that all of these different colors of lights are, uh, are coming back into the camera lens. Okay, so here's our camera lens. Let's have a little look about what it's doing inside. Now, the thing about lenses is they bend light. They bend light and they focus light. Now what you see here are two different sets of lenses, uh, a rather simple setup, but it'll, it'll give us a good idea of what's happening inside the camera lens, and we'll have a look at one with a lot more elements soon. These here are convex lenses, and these convex lenses actually bend light inward. So every time the light enters a lens or leaves a lens, it gets bent based on the angle and the density of that lens that it's entering. Okay? So you'll see here that the light is actually spreading out, but this convex lens bends it back in, so it's parallel, and then this one bends it back in again, and you'll actually see that it's focused over here. Now down here we have a convex lens to actually grab a hold of the light that's spreading out. Once it gets parallel, we're using a concave lens, okay, concave, just a different shape inward and that's actually causing the light to spread out. And this is very useful for us to actually have features like a zoom. So let's have a look at a camera zoom lens because almost all professional cameras have a zoom lens, 12 times, 14 times for sports could be very, very uh, big factor there. So what we've got here is we've got our convex lens that's gathering light at the front of the camera it's pulling it in here, and we've got a concave lens that's going to spread it back out again, and another lens that's going to grab it before it goes off and send it to our, our focusing lens, which is another concave lens. Now, the thing about this is, this first area from here to here, whoops, sorry about that. This, the first three elements that you see are actually part of the zoom mechanism. Okay, and what's going to happen is, in a zoom mechanism, is this concave piece moves back and forth. Okay, and then the focusing element, the very last one, it